Hello to everyone. Thank you all for joining me at this time. My name is Shavi Zane, and I'm coming on to bring a message forward for those of you who still have many questions in terms of your spiritual path. Um, you might have questions in regards to generational curses. Um, so I want to get right into, I'm going to go into some biblical texts. This is somewhat of a part two from the last message that I did. Um, I don't recall the title, but I'll put it in the description box below um, so that you can go back and reference that where I spoke about Job um, and the definition of Lord in the Bible and how there was some discrepancies there in terms of God and Lord. Lord being uh, someone who is a person of authority, okay, sometimes used... Uh, to mean sir or most pop or most properly denoted ownership or mastery. So somebody who's also referred to as sir, the lord, a lord, a master, someone who is in a position of authority. But this will be a person. That is uh, the definition of lord. And I also found that under the biblical definition of lord as well. So what I want to speak about today, I've had so many messages coming through. I want to first start off by saying that in terms of why I'm doing this message, you know, the enemy has built his empire through spiritual warfare. And it is only through spiritual wisdom that we destroy the enemy's empire and build the kingdom. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. The enemy has built his empire through spiritual warfare. And playing on the minds of those of you who are the children of the Most High God. And the only way to destroy his empire is through spiritual wisdom. So you have to gain an understanding of where things went wrong and how, how we ended up taking the wrong path and was pretty much bamboozled, okay? Not everybody is going to agree with this message. But I always give you all fair warning. When you come into my channel, just know that I'm going to touch on some subjects that might not make you feel so comfortable, but I'm not here to leave anybody feeling snuggly and cozy. It's time to wake up. And in this season of awakening, you know, you got to get up out of bed. You can't stay snuggled in pressing the snooze button. So I'm not here to uh, help anyone to stay asleep. I'm here to be a part of the awakening. I will also say that not everything... The majority of the wisdom that comes through me, through my vessel, is literally by me being just that, a vessel. And when I connect with the Most High and my spiritual team, I ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and it is granted to me in different ways. I'll have dreams, I'll have intuitive messages that'll just come through, spiritual uploads is what I like to call them, but these messages come through, okay? And... This wisdom that I'm granted, even through the Holy Spirit, okay? I embody the Holy Spirit as well. This wisdom that comes through, specifically this one, is in regards to the curses. Now, when you look into the book of uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 through 20, it begins to speak on a lot of the curses that will be placed over the chosen, the elect, the children of the Most High God. I want to first start by talking about the definition of a curse. A curse is a solemn utterance to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punish someone. So this is a utterance. Usually it comes through anger, okay? But this is a utterance. So somebody has to speak this, okay? To invoke, so to conjure up a supernatural power. So something that is outside of the norm, something that is outside of your natural understanding. Okay, this is something that you will be able to understand through your spiritual eyes and not through your natural eyes. A supernatural, to invoke a supernatural power. Obviously one that would be of low vibrational energy, demonic energy. Okay to inflict harm or punishment. Now, 
In terms of a curse, many people have a disconnection when you hear generational curses or the curses that was placed over the children of Israel for their disobedience to God. You think of a curse, you, you, you have a disconnect from what a curse is when we're talking about rituals, actual spell work, actual dark magic, okay? People tend to separate what a curse is. Um, and they, they lose the connection of what, what the true definition of a curse is, okay? So as you can see, it, the, the scripture, I'm just trying to find a scripture here because I'm going to be reading this from my phone in a minute. Um, because we're going to go over these curses. Now, the message that was given to me is that the curses that are written in the biblical text. Now, this might blow your mind or some of you might say, okay, well, I already intuitively felt this. The curses that was placed in the biblical text was put there specifically to ensure that a certain group of people, a targeted group of people would read that text, absorb it, okay, and actually have the curse placed over them through reading of the text. And accepting it based on the fact that the biblical text, you know, right above the curses, right above that particular part of the uh, book, it speaks on the blessings that you might have. Then it moves into the curses that will come to pass in the event of rebellion to what is written above. I just want to say, like I told you all, many of the messages that come through for me, they come straight through intuitively. Intuitively, I don't have any text that you can reference that's going to so-called back up what I'm saying. But consider that everything that you read has been written by someone who is either writing this based on what he's read from those things that other people have written. So historical accounts that other people have documented and they write the book based on what they have read or it's going to be from inspired words like the biblical text. It's supposed to be people or prophets or characters in this book who have written these texts because they have been inspired through the messages that was filtered in from their connection to the Most High. So I don't have any text that you can reference. So this is all about going within, asking for discernment, listening to your own intuition, and you go back and do your own reading and see how you perceive this, okay? In terms of Deuteronomy... We're talking about the curses here. Let's get right into these curses because there's a lot here. So this message is going to be lengthy. Y'all already know how I roll. So let's start in verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, there's the word Lord again, thy God, okay? Keep in mind that Lord also means a person who is in a position of authority, okay? Sometimes a master or someone who is in, who is denoted uh, a owner, but most properly denoted ownership or mastery, okay? So the Lord, but it shall come to pass, if thou shalt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So I suppose this will be Moses who's supposed to be reading this off to the children of Israel, right? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now the curses that are written out here, it says, curse shalt thou be in the city and curse shalt thou be in the field. So in the city, just everyday living, you're cursed. In the field, where you're picking your cotton, where you're uh, planting your, your, your vineyard, you're cursed there too. 
everywhere that you go, no matter where you go, this is what it's saying, that you are cursed, right? Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So the fruit of the body, I feel like this is saying what you bear, what you bear forth, okay? The fruit, your, your children, okay? Your offspring, the fruit of the body and the fruit of, the, of thy land, which will be your vineyards, whatever you plant is also going to be cursed. And the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So everything that was that was owned, this is the curse that's saying everything that you have, it's all cursed. Okay. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. So even when you're coming in the house, you curse. When you leave out the house, you curse. Every everywhere you go, you curse, right? Okay. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing. What is a curse again? Let's read it. A solemn utterance to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone. Okay? The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for, unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me. Okay, now I'm trying to get to the parts where it's going to be very specific. But as you all know, in terms of the melanated man, woman and child. These curses have been specifically this spell work has been specifically cast upon the melanated man, woman and child. The so-called powers that were those who are in a position of power now who are currently losing that power understood way back then in the age of Pisces that it would take a supernatural power of lower level entities to invoke harm and punishment over the chosen. They would have to speak this. It is an utterance. Okay. That's what a curse is. It is an utterance. So they, they, they conspired together to come up with a plan. They gathered together their witches they gathered together their warlocks and they conspired together of a plan in order to place this utterance, this curse, this ritual over the melanated man, woman, and child in order to uplift themselves into a position of power with the hopes that it would last for generations to come. This is where you get generational curses. Because their plan, their conspiracy, they conspired so that they, they projected, they wanted to see far out in the distance that they would maintain their position of power moving through the age of Pisces all the way into the age of Aquarius. They wanted to maintain that curse. And the way that they've been able to do this the most strongly is by handing the melanated man, woman, and child in during this time of slavery, during the time of them invoking fear, they handed the melanated man and woman the Bible, the only book that they would allow to be read, okay? And so then you have to ask yourself, why was this particular text, why was they comfortable with handing the melanated man and woman the Bible and they couldn't look at anything else? Largely because when they tampered with the original text and they removed much of the scriptures, they added many things to cater to their agenda and they incited fear and handed the melanated man, woman, and child a false god that would further enhance their power through our energy through our prayers, and through our focus. That God would be the false Christ. The European false Christ, also known as, uh, who was, the portrait is said, was began with Caesar Borgia, who Leonardo da Vinci painted a portrait of Caesar Borgia. And it was also rumored that this man was a homosexual. And he died of syphilis, okay? 
but he was also so-called high-ranking in their kingdom, okay? They knew that they would need to put a curse over the chosen, the children of the Most High God, but the only way the curse would actually be effective is if the children of the Most High God actually accepted this curse as being something that they deserved, something that they had called to themselves some kind of way. And many did. But let's, let's continue reading as to why it was accepted. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption. Hold on, did I skip something here? Okay, yes. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land where thou goest to possess it. So wherever you go, the, the Lord is going to have someone, your enemy that's in opposition to you to ensure that wherever you go, He's going to come in and possess whatever land you whatever land you overtake. Whatever land is yours, he's going to come and possess it, no matter where you go on the four corners of the earth, right? The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever. And get this, y'all, and with the inflammation. Now, one of the major things that those of us who have awakened have come to understand, most people who, who awaken, you go through different processes, okay? And one of them deals with learning about holistic healing, which would include your physical health. And one of the things that you come to learn about is that disease begins with inflammation. That's the root of all disease is inflammation. Now, this is one of the curses, one of the rituals that have that has been uttered, spoken over the children of the Most High God. OK, that inflammation and with ex and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. OK. So it's saying you're going to be smitten with this consumption, with a fever, with inflammation, with extreme burning and, and a sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall consume thee until thou perish. So we know that because we were so far removed from remembrance of who we are and what our ancestors did prior to these, to the enemy coming in to exert his power by stripping us of ours. We had specific diets, okay? There was things that we did, you know, we was mostly, you know, it's so many scriptures that reference eating of the harvest, okay? It speaks on eating the harvest and, you know, you plant for six years and then the real Sabbath, the real Sabbath comes on the seventh year where you rest and you just make sure that in the sixth year you have an overflow of harvest so that, you know, your barns are stocked and you're able to eat from the overflow so that in that seventh year, you're just able to rest and you give the earth a break, okay, of needing to yield these fruits, you know, for your consumption, fruits and vegetables for your consumption. The contradictory scriptures go into the eating of the meat and things of that nature. But when you come into your awakening and you start to learn about holistic healing, you start to understand that meat is highly acidic, this is already, it's, it's clear, you know, it's been too many people who have brought this forth as, as proof, people like Dr. Sebi, um, and um, I forgot the other, it's a young guy now, his name is Oyaki, is his name, um, very well versed in, in things, I feel like he's a, you know, a young Dr. Sebi, if not, you know, he's up there with him, okay, but he's very well versed in regards to these things, so I strongly recommend that you go check out his channel, but it's very clear that people have been able to come forth with evidence to prove that inflammation begins through acidic foods. And so meat is highly acidic. But not only that, when you look at it from a spiritual aspect, I'm not going to go too far too deep into this, but this is one of the curses, inflammation. The spiritual aspect of consuming certain foods 
is that most of the things that people consume in their sleep state is things that's going to keep them asleep, things that are dead. So animals are dead. Cooked vegetables are dead because you pretty much cook all of the life out of it. So it has no, there's no live, um, you know, there's no electricity in it once it's boiled out and cooked all the way out, okay? It's just, it might taste good once you season it, but there's nothing there in terms of to actually heal your body and to bring life into your body. And so then, of course, the processed foods, which is fake food. Everything that the enemy has handed to you in your sleep state was to keep you asleep and to keep you spiritually dead. Once you start eating things that have life in them and electricity in them and is not cooked out, is not killed off, then you're consuming things that's actually going to awaken your DNA, that's going to awaken um, your, your energy, your power, your strength, and it's going to actually heal you of inflammation because when you're in an alkaline state, you don't, you're not in a position to have a lot of inflammation in your body or a lot of mucus build up in your body. So... This is one of the curses in your sleep state. The enemy had you believing that there were certain things that it's okay to consume. He even threw a little, he even threw an extra scripture in there to have you thinking that it was okay to assume swine. Oh, it's, it's not what goes into the mouth of a man, but it's what comes out of the mouth of a man that actually corrupts him. Well, that's a damn lie <laughs> because it's very clear that many of the diseases that exist today, especially in between, uh, amongst the melanated man, woman, and child, is largely due to the consumption of these foods. Chitlins, pork chops, bot I mean, Lord, in the down south, you're talking about crabs, all the bottom feeder fish, catfish, they love that stuff. Shrimp, it's bad. And the health is horrible out there. And the mindset is low vibrational for a large part of that, that region because of what they take in. So the enemy switched everything around. And much of the biblical text involves, it shows you this, okay? So let me keep going. We already touched the inflammation. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thy feet shall be iron. This is talking about prison, the prison system, okay? Who is in the, who, who, who dominates, who is predominantly in prison? Who is the enemy constantly targeting to put behind bars? That obviously would be the melanated man, woman, and child. So that's another curse. Thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and thy earth that is under thy feet shall be iron. Then it says, the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come from from heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Now, for me, I see this powder and dust as being the chemtrails. I see this powder and dust as being what they are constantly, you know, polluting the, you know, our crops with, okay, pesticides and things of that nature, but also the chemtrails polluting the land. Next one says, the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And so we will be scattered, right? So it was well known, especially during the time of enslavement, when, when the enemy first came over here to steal this land, he didn't discover shit, okay? It was already discovered and well kept. When the enemy came over here to steal this land, what he did was he scattered all of those who was here on the four corners of the earth. So whether you're being sold here, sold there, sent off here, sent to this, this, this so-called um, um, kidnapper, because I don't like to call them slave masters, kidnappers. So you're sold to this kidnapper over here, and then your wife is sold to this kidnapper over there all the way across the country. Then your, your child is sold to this kidnapper over here, okay? 
this is what is I feel is what this scripture is, uh, this particular curse is speaking on. Let's keep going. And thy carcass shall be meat unto fowls of the air and unto the beast of the earth and no man shall fray them away. So what is this talking about? Strange fruit? Do you remember that song, Strange Fruit? Dangling in the air? That's when these people was killing off thousands and thousands and thousands of melanated men, women, and children. Hangings where you'll be hanging on a tree for days on end and nobody was going to come and take you up off of that tree out of fear. Your own people didn't do it out of fear. Now, there were some of us who stepped in and knew that there needed to be a proper burial, but many who did not out of fear that something would happen to them, that retaliation would happen. And so, of course, your carcass is swinging. It is a foul it shall be meat unto the fowls of the air. So the birds will come and eat at your carcass because you're swinging from this tree. You're hanging from this tree for days on end. So your flesh is rotting. And then the beast of the earth, they're also smelling this, fre this flesh and they're coming in and, and, and eating these people. Our ancestors. This is another curse that these people, all, all of these curses that's in here have been played out by the enemy in some way, shape or form throughout history. That you can go and read up, read it, read into and find that in textbook. And it's very clear. We know this to be true. Okay. Because even the enemy himself has come out and admitted to that. But won't admit to the fact that there's recompense that needs to be brought forth at this time. Okay. So the carcass shall be meat unto fowls of the air and unto beasts of the earth. And no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emrods and with the scab and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. So we're talking about scabs and itches, okay? A botch, scabs and itches. So what did they come over here and do to the native Indians who are melanated people? They look just like me and you, okay? Those of you who are melanated people, what did they do to them? They gave them smallpox. A man-made disease. They gave it to them purposely to kill all thousands of the native Indians, if not more. That's another curse that they themselves uttered towards us, and they also played it out. They made sure that it came into fruition through their own actions. Then also you can consider that the, the itch could be things like eczema, things like herpes, um, different skin conditions that would have an itch, a scab and an itch, where, whereof thou canst not be healed, okay? So they already begin this, 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 this mindset. They try to tell you that there's going to be a curse that we place over you that you're not going to be able to heal from. So they, always, they already create a dependency on the, the medical structure, the healthcare system, in biblical text through this curse. By making you believe that there's something that they can do against you that's so foul that you won't be able to heal it through the thousands and thousands of herbs that are naturally placed within this earth. So that's another mind manipulative uh, tactic that they used against the chosen. Okay, let's move on. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. So madness, crazy, make you lose your mind. So... Isn't that something that's playing out in the melanated community? We can't, for the life of us, come to the understanding of why a black man would kill another black man or why a black woman would kill another black woman. We can't come to the understanding to, to conceptualize why these things are happening, but why can't you see that clearly unless you're still asleep? You have to understand the generational curses, rituals, spell work that has been placed not only on your physical existence, but your emotional existence, your spiritual existence, every facet of you. These people wanted to make sure that they tore it down to shreds and utterly destroyed it. And so madness will be over your mental state. The Lord will smite thee with madness and blindness. Now, keep, keep in mind now. This is all, every, almost every curse here begins with the Lord. 
Let me remind you again of what the Lord means. It is a person of authority, sometimes used to mean sir, but most properly denoted ownership and mastery. So these people were what? They, they called themselves being an owner of a slave? Oh, now you own somebody that you kidnapped. Somebody that you have no authority over. You own them, though. You are their master now. So that's what they had our ancestors calling them. Master. Yes, sir, sir. Yes, sir, ma'am. You ain't no damn ma'am. You damn sure ain't no master. Please don't make me go there. Let me calm down. Hold on, y'all. Let me light my sage. Because, see... The more that I dive into these things, it's becoming so apparent what these people have done um, in terms of spiritual manipulation and these rituals that they did against us and how they played on our minds to make us read these texts and accept it. You still have people, especially within the church structure, I'm talking about the melanated man and woman, and this is, let me just put this disclaimer out there. I have people who are European who watch my channel. And I do not deter you away from my channel. I welcome you as long as you are willing and able to accept the truth for what it is. And as long as you are willing and able to be a part of putting the, the, the intentions out there to break these cycles that many of your ancestors have perpetuated against the melanated man, woman, and child. Because their, their ultimate goal if you do not break the cycle in your in, throughout your family of the hatred against the, the melanated man, woman, and child, then the ultimate goal of the so-called powers that were is that your children will help them to uh, continue this hatred against us. They will try and use your children and indoctrinate your children to believe that they are superior to the melanated man, woman, and child. And that is so far from true. Let's keep going. So the next part here says, so in terms of the madness, yes. And that's, that's, that's where it comes in at, okay? You got all of this bottled up energy, all of this anger this, that, that cannot be directed towards the true perpetrator. And so what happens is the man, let's just speak on the masculine and feminine energy because this is another part of where the enemy was targeting. The enemy wanted to bring an imbalance in the masculine and feminine energy of the, ma uh, the melanated man, woman, and child. So how did they emasculate the man? Well, first by having you worship and send your prayers and your praises and your reverence to a homosexual, Caucasian, false god. How did the, how, And you say, well, how does that affect someone's uh, sexuality or their masculinity? If they're praying to a homosexual European false god. Well, part of it is that let's just consider if you was praying to a demon. Are you not going to embody the energy and the spirit of that demon? Are you not going to embody wickedness and evil in your heart if you are praying to a demon? So it's the same thing. If you are praying and sending your, your energy to a false Christ who the image, the person whose image that, that you have in your mind that was indoctrinated into your mind for many generations now is that depiction of Caesar Borgia who was a homosexual, then likely you're going to start picking up on some feminine tendencies because that is the God that you give reverence to. Just like if you was to give that energy to a demonic God. So with that being said, that's one of the ways that they emasculated the, the, the melanated man. Another way that they did it was through fear tactics. As long as they take away his ability to protect his woman and his children by murdering him and doing um, horrific acts to him or, to his, or, or in front of him, like doing horrific acts to his wife in front of him, raping her. Okay, killing her or snatching his children away from him, feeding them to alligators as alligator bait, you know, uh, cutting off his own genitals. They had many different ways of emasculating the male in the melanated community. 
And so what happened is psychologically, it began to play on him where he began to believe that he had no power. And a man that believes that he has no power and he has no ability to protect those that he loves. We're talking about the wife, his wife and his, his seed, his offspring. Then what happens is, is subconsciously he goes into a, a way and he goes into a way of thinking that says, I must nurture myself. I must, I gotta, I gotta heal myself. And so he goes into that, that feminine energy that needs that mothering. He needs to be healed. He needs to be rocked, but there's no one around to do it. You know why? Because the, the feminine, this is where we get into the feminine energy being off balance. The woman is now in survival mode. So she's no longer concerned about being the nurturer. She's no longer concerned about being the healer to her masculine counterpart. Now she's more concerned about survival. I got to make sure my baby stay alive. I got to make sure you don't get, get killed off. So no, this ain't about me. I'm not in my emotions right now. I can't, I can't help you to heal from that. You got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps because we got to live. So now the woman is in survival mode. And anytime you're in survival mode, you're in protective mode. And that is naturally the energy that the man possesses, protection. But because he's been stripped of his authority to do so through inc the inciting of fear by the enemy, then the woman goes into protection mode. So now you got a feminine energy who is, e who is emasculated, who's now in her masculine energy. Then you have a masculine, a man who is now in his feminine energy where he is highly emotional and he doesn't know what to do with those emotions because if he directs it towards the true enemy, then he will likely lose his life as a result of it. This is the illusion that they have handed to us. And I say it's an illusion largely because if the melanated man, woman, if the melanated man and woman actually came together, really the enemy, those who are in a position of so-called authority, yes, they are European. We already know that, okay? Y'all know that. They only populate 10%. They're only 10% of the population. The rest of the earth is melanated people. That's a fact. So these people knew that they were already at a strong disadvantage physically because they did not, they, that we outnumbered them too. I mean, we was too deep. <laughs> we was deep, but even, even greater than that, we had a divine connection. We knew our power. We knew our strength. We knew who we was. We knew that we possessed the ability to shift the energy. We knew our connections to everything that exists around us. That's why when you went off into different parts of the, the land, we got pyramids up everywhere. We got, you know, you can look into um, various areas of the world where, you know, the hieroglyphs, you'll, you'll see that we was always connected. We understood the stars. We understood the planetary shifts. We understood the seasons. We understood the circle of life. We was completely in alignment with everything that exists around us. Even here on this soil, the native Indians, who is us, also understood our connection to nature and how nature is healing and how you can hear the birds. The birds are messengers and how you can sun gaze and how you can speak to the water and how you can. It's so many things that we have forgotten because these people needed to redirect our energy and make us believe that we was cursed which they did. They put, a, they put a spell over us. Ritualistic spell. And this is why in the age of Aquarius, this is the time of the awakening. Because what does a spell do? A spell puts you to sleep. But not only did they do this spell work and this ritual, it was also to inflict harm and pain over us so that we would end up having this post-traumatic slave syndrome. We would end up having this, this these stressors that would be passed on from one generation to the next. And so because the... Feminine energy for many, many generations has been in her masculine, too far into her masculine energy. The masculines, the men have been too far into their feminine energy. You have these two energies that come together to try to create offspring. And what happens over time, the genetic, the DNA structure begins to shift because subconsciously the masculine, the man is now feminine. Even if he's not a homosexual, he's now feminine because he has been stripped of his ability to protect his family. And the feminine energy subconsciously is now masculine. 
And so she's now in this energy of survival mode, trying to take care of the home and take care of her children. We're going to get back to these curses because there's more here. But this, what happens is genetically, you end up shifting the genetic uh, blueprint through the subconscious suppressed, through the subconscious suppressed confusion that these people have placed over us. And what happens is over time, generations to come, you end up bearing daughters who act like men, like literally, who say, well, since I was born, I've been a lesbian. And men who act like women, who say, since I was born, I've been a homosexual. But it's because of the generational curses. Let's keep going. Um, and thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. So pretty much saying you're going to, you know, daytime, nighttime, you're going to always be in this energy of, first of all, as the blind gropeth in the darkness. So there's something about your eyes, a veil being placed over your eyes so that you cannot see. You know, even when things are fully illuminated before you in the daytime, you're still going to be groping about as if it's darkness because you still cannot see. When it's right there in front of your face and the answers are right there in front of your face, you're still not going to be able to see it because you've been indoctrinated and spellbound so heavily up underneath this dark magic and spell work that these people have done that you will look at a scripture and say, oh, it says Ye Yeshua was bronze for bronze feet. And woolly hair, no, he, he was white. So let's move on. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Did that not happen? When these kidnappers came over here, we had our unions, our divine unions, and they came in because they can't, they can't get enough of the melanin. Okay, it's something about us that they just can't help. They just got to touch us. They got to rape us. Okay, jealous of the men, you know, insatiable sexual appetites for the women, even though they'll put they'll put us down in the public, in the, in the media and say that we ain't nothing, we ain't worth nothing. But yet they couldn't keep their hands off of us, even though their wives was laying right next to them when they called themselves being our so-called master. Thou shalt betroth the wife and another man shall lie with her. So that's another curse that they, that they ultimately played out. They created the curse and then they fulfilled it. Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell therein. What house did we build? The entire country of America. Hello. We ain't just talking about their individual homes that we built because that's also. But we built the entire country. And still have not been able to find home here because these people have placed themselves in a position of so-called authority to say that we're going to always remain on the bottom. And even if you do purchase a home, you know, you can have the whole house and have, you know, own the entire house. You done paid it off and paid all of that extra interest, you know, well over what it was worth. And you still don't own it if they decide to say they want to come and take the land because if you don't, if you don't own the land, then you don't own the home. So... That's another curse that they placed over us and played it out. Let's keep going. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and thou shalt not gra gather the grapes thereof. So you're going to plant all of these vineyards and you're still not going to reap the harvest of those things that you planted. You're going to have to pick them during slavery. What they say, you're going to have to pick those things. Even now, even past the physical, the, the slavery that you could see clearly because slavery still exists. These people still, they've played with the minds. I told you all in terms of the last message that I did, the 13th Amendment, they still have slavery very much so in existence. It's just, it has a different face, but it's still the same bondage, okay? When they said that the only way that you could remain a slave is... Um, and I'm just looking for the 13th Amendment, but I don't have that paper here with me. So I'm just going to, the only way that you, that they could actually enforce slavery is if you were convicted of a crime. And then at that point they could, you would be a slave again. So if you get convicted, y'all know a conviction is anything. You can get a damn ticket and that's a conviction. You know, as long as the judge sees, finds you guilty, 
a suspended driver's license getting pulled over for that. That's a conviction. So who is mostly targeted when it comes to these so-called convictions? The melanated man, woman, and child. And so that was their wordplay to trick you and to create another illusion to, into thinking that you, that they had actually uh, done something uh, noble and had freed the melanated man and woman from their kidnapping, okay, from the bondage that they had put, placed over the melanated man and woman. But it was just wordplay. So let's, let's keep going. Because there's certain things in here that I really want to touch on. So we spoke about that. Okay, thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Okay, so they're going to take everything, everything that you have of value. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Did that not happen to us? But see, you all already know who owns the media. You know who owns the banking systems. You know who owns practically everything at this time. So it's not but so much that I can say. But I'll just say this. Revelation speaks on those who say they are Jews but are not, but instead are the synagogue of Satan. Now, if you are a synagogue of Satan, that means that you are a temple that is embodies demonic energy. Those specific people who own everything, they are warlocks and witches behind the scene. They needed us to believe that they, in fact, were the chosen ones. And that we were the Gentiles. They needed to create the storyline for themselves. to, Because as long as we believe it, then we give it power. We give, we feed the energy of what they was creating as long as we believe the illusion that they fed us. And so they are the ones who took our inheritance and our birthright. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fall, then and thy and thine eyes shall look and fall and fail with longing for them all all day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. So you won't even have the power to go and get your children back. Now this is not just doing during slavery as you know it. This is also today through the foster care system where they take your children largely because they say that your child is already naturally a ward of the state once you give them a birth certificate and a social security number up underneath the U.S. corporation. And so this is why you can send your child to school and if there's, you know, they have, they have these witches and warlocks and these people that work amongst this system set up in many different places doctor's offices, in school systems, social workers. Uh, I mean, you name it, they're there. They make sure of that, okay? You can send your child to school, and if they sense that there's anything, you know, they might say that your child's shoe was dirty today and decide they want to call, and they can send a caseworker out that will all, just like that, they'll be all up in your business trying to tell you that you are no longer fit to parent your child and that their system that they have created, which is clearly failing, is more fit to raise and to rear up your child than you are as their natural parent. When more sexual abuse, mental abuse, financial abuse, and, and, and emotional abuse takes place in the foster care homes than it would in the home of the natural parents, in the, the, in the home of the mother and the father of that child, the biological family. That's a known fact. But yet this system still continues to thrive. Why? Because too, too many people still believe in a system. You, if, if, if somebody came and told you that your next door neighbor did this to a child, even though they have done nothing wrong, most of the people will believe the, believe the social worker because of the badge that they wear and because of the title that they have. And so people do not have, you know, our people do not have the protection that we need to go against these people. Okay, but we have to create it. 
That's the thing. So when we get to the end, we're going to talk about creating because generational curse breakers, y'all are here. We are here in our awakening to break these curses, to break the spell work, to break the dark magic. This is not something that the Most High placed over us. This is something that the enemy did through dark magic rituals, work witches and warlocks behind the scenes, the synagogue of Satan in order to create his power over us. It's time that we wake up to see what this stuff means. Okay, because we've been bamboozled and sold an illusion that we bought for too long. So, let me see. I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to move down to verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and thou shalt serve other gods, wood and stone. So, of course, we ended up serving other gods. The one that they created, this false illusion, this false Christ, this European homosexual Christ is what we ended up serving for too many generations. Your grandmother, your great-grandmother, your auntie, they all got pictures of this. Many of them still have the picture of the European Christ sitting right there in their home, cursing every part of their existence. And they still, when they close their eyes, they envision in a blue-eyed, effeminate, uh, European man in their prayers. And that's why their prayers have not been able to reach the Most High God because it got cut off at a demon. We got to take our power back. And so, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither, thou sh whither, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So yeah, an astonishment, a proverb, a byword. What's a byword? That's being called everything except for your natural name. So they're going to call you African American. They're going to call you Negro. They're going to call you colored. They're going to call you nigger. They're going to call you, you know, uh, everything up underneath the book, black. Everything except for who you naturally are to make you forget who you are. That's a part of the curse, the dark magic, the rituals that they did and that they played out. An astonishment amongst all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So, yeah, other people are astonished by this. Other people, Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, these people are astonished at the fact that the melanated man, woman, and child here on this land, here in America, are have been worshiping a God that looks nothing like us for generations. They're like, who the hell, where they do that at? What happened to these people to where they're so confused that they would buy into going to church every Sunday and worshiping a God that looks nothing like them when in fact the very scripture that they read tells them that that Yeshua is looks just like them. Where do they do that at? When you are under spell work, that's how that stuff plays out. That's how it happens. Okay, so an astonishment to other people. They're amazed at how the enemy has been able to, able to overtake us and bamboozle, and bamboozle us in this way. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil." and thine oil shall cast his fruit. And then we move on to 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So you can't even, you're going to give birth to all of these children, but you can't even enjoy them because these people see you as a baby making factory that's supposed to only be here to service them and their perverted desires and their uh, power hungry desires and their ego driven narcissistic desires. They see your children, your offspring as being their property. And that's what they, the moment that you go into this system and you sign, but we did all of this under ignorance. That's where they have a, they don't have an upper hand because they knew that us signing these birth certificates and these social security numbers, we did this in ignorance. You know, we had no idea what these people was really doing behind the scenes. We had no idea that we were signing ourselves over to a corporation, a business that will ultimately use us as being collateral, okay, to, to try to sell us off to other nations of people, okay? 
organ harvesting, uh, taking our accounts, using our accounts, okay, because these uh, social security numbers are actual accounts, okay? They, they did these things underhandedly and we blindly followed suit. We have blindly kept them in a position of power through our vote. When you go vote, and I've said this before and I'm going to say it again, when you go and stand in those lines, you are not voting for a president. You are voting to say that you give these people permission to stay in power over you. That's it and that's all. They've already made up in their minds who's going to be the president. That's why you always hear this mess about, oh, will somebody tamper with the ballots and somebody stole election votes and all this other stuff. That's just to fool you into thinking that your vote actually counts some way, shape, or form and that they have some concern about whether or not it's being done legitimately. Fact of the matter is, these people have all of this stuff planned out. And they know that all they need is for you to stand in line and to place your signature on the dotted line to say, I give you the authority over myself and my children. I support you uh, co uh, continuing the, uh, the system of enslavement over my offspring. That's what you do when you stand in line. And this is why it's so important for those of you who have felt this fire within you. You know that you're supposed to be changing something and you're feeling like, well, if I just get into uh, in a pot of, into politics and somehow, you know, we got to infiltrate. We got to get into there some kind of way. When The moment you get in there, they're going to flip everything that you planned on doing because they're going to make sure that you rock to their beat and not to your own. Because this system is not set up for you to come in there and to enforce your own belief system. We have to build the kingdom. You first build the kingdom within because you are the kingdom, but you first got to clean up house. You got to clean up shop, get rid of all of that lower level energy, that carnal nature, that jealous spirit, that Jezebel spirit. You know, all of those things that you might have been drawn to in your sleep state. You got to wake up. You got to do the work to heal. And then your, 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 your individual kingdom, your individual vessel, which is a part of the greater whole, is now prepared to be an extra brick to be added to the overall kingdom. And the more that we do this brick by brick, we are actually building the kingdom in a spiritual realm. And by the time the energy is set in the spiritual realm and the foundation is laid there, Everything comes crashing down in the physical where you clearly see that we are now, that's when we start to receive our blessings and everything that is owed to us, we start to, it comes back to us. And now we have everything that we need to lay the foundation in the physical. This is how it has to play out. Let me just see. I want to read a couple more of these because, um, because there's a lot more here. I mean, these curses, they go on and on and on. You know, it even spoke on, I want to find that particular uh, scripture where it spoke on tumors. Um, I don't know that it used that exact, uh, that exact term, but it was speaking on like, uh, like cancer. It speaks on even <clears throat> the hair, losing your hair. Black women have dealt with issues of alopecia and hair loss for many, many years. That's another one of the curses, the dark magic, the spell work that they did over our beauty, beauty spells, okay? They did this because they wanted to make us feel less than who we are. But not only that, they knew that ultimately they, they, they created the curse and that they would act it out by making us hate our hair. So let's put out ads only with women who have straightened hair. Let's, let's, let's uplift the, what I think it was, I forgot the lady who made the perms, okay? But she made the perms and became rich from that. Because it was a way of destroying our ability to connect. Our hair grows up towards the sun. We are the only people whose hair grows up towards the sun, just like the plants and the trees do. And that's how we're able to receive information. It's like antennas coiled antennas that allows us to absorb and to receive information. And so they knew that by shifting your perception of your own beauty, you would ultimately go and you would fry your hair. Not only that, but these are chemicals, chemicals that will burn straight through your scalp and into your brain where there's others who, uh, these were morticians who actually uh, said that mo a majority of the black women, like if they had to go in and maybe do some sort of um, 
forensic um, investigative work on a black woman who might have been killed or died or whatever, if they had to take that area, like the skin, the top part of the head down to the brain, they saw that it was all gray, fried off at the, at, in the brain. Because these chemicals, you use these for so many years, this stuff will burn. You put a can inside of some perm, it's going to completely disintegrate the can. So what do you think it's doing with skin that is very absorbent? This is the largest organ on the body. It absorbs things. Okay? And so you're taking this stuff in and it's going down into your brain and it's causing you to lose your mind. You don't even know left from right. Okay? And then on top of that, not, not only do we do, do, do black women do that, but then you turn around and put somebody else's hair on your head. You don't even know the spirit that that person possessed before you put that hair on your head. We got to really start thinking and our awakening. We got to start considering what we have been doing to ourselves. But again, this is a large part of the black magic that has been done over the melanated man, woman, and child. But in your awakening, you start to do things differently. Once you see, you can no longer unsee. And that's when you have to start making a change. You got to start loving on yourself more. Start embracing that kinky hair. I don't care if it's hard to comb. Take the time out to do it. And if, if it's something, you know, and when you come into your awakening, you decide, okay, well, I'd rather lock my hair, you know, then lock it. But don't destroy the natural fabric and the natural makeup of who you are for the sake of living up to the expectations of the media. They've brainwashed us into, <clears throat> into believing that we are not good enough in our natural state. They wanted to take you as far away from your origin and from your authenticity as possible, physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. And they've done a good job at it. But now it's time for us to reverse this thing. Like I said from the very beginning, they built this structure through spiritual warfare and manipulation. And now we destroyed their structure through our spiritual wisdom. So we take our power back and we send those declarations out. I declare and I decree that, uh, that I... Um, break all generational curses over my ancestors, over myself, over my offspring. I break all generational curses off of the ancestors of the chosen. I break all generational curses off of the melanated man, woman, and child. I declare and I decree destruction over the system. I declare and I decree destruction over the enemy. I declare and I decree that all rituals and dark magic that has been done over myself and over my family for generations is now destroyed forevermore in spirit and in flesh and sleep and awake and state across all timelines, realms and dimensions known and unknown. And so it is. We declare and we decree it and we put it out there. We have to first take our power back in the spiritual realm because everything is formed in the spiritual and it manifests in the physical from there. They understood this and that's why they had to divert your attention away from your spiritual understanding so that you will be creating for them in a spiritual realm because they have no connection. They have no divine connection. They are very low in their energy. These people are part of the underworld so they can't even reach their prayers don't reach high enough because they're so wicked. And so they knew that we would at least, we, we wouldn't, we wasn't going to reach the most high God in those prayers because too many of us was centered around a white European illusion of a Christ. And not only that, but we was also sitting back on our hands in a pass in a passive state, waiting on that same Christ to come and save us. So they knew that in creating that illusion for us, that we would also be passive in our energy and also creating fear tactics, inciting fear tactics to say, if you step outside of the box that we have created for you, then you are now going into witchcraft. You are now going into um, uh, demonic things that are uh, in opposition to what the Lord, your God, has commanded of you. They... they they fed it to you all backwards, okay? Everything about these people, they wanted to make sure that every part of your perception was an illusion and it has been for generations. And so I think this is where I'm going to stop. I just want to see if there's anything else that I want to speak on. Um, I did want to touch on, there is a scripture that speaks on um, eating her young. Let me just, let me just read on this one real quick. Uh. Like I told y'all, this is going to be a long message, but for those of you who stick it out, shout out to y'all, okay? Uh, because this is very important information, especially if you are on your spiritual journey and you have questions. And, you know, still go and, and pray for discernment 
Um, this is one of the curses that they spoke on in terms of the, 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 the mother and the father shall eat their young. And I just want to read it verbatim here. Scripture. And I want to tell you all where I strongly sense this, um, this particular, okay, so that would be Deuteronomy 28 verses 53. Then shall ye eat the offspring of your own body, the flesh of your sons and of your daughters, when, whom the Lord your God has given you. Okay. Now this particular scripture, that's one of the curses that's underneath the curses of eating your young. Um, this is largely due to the ritual that is done every first Sunday. That is what keeps people in this energy because you're talking about eating, drinking of the blood and eating of the flesh. That is a ritual that they have people performing every first Sunday. I did it for many years since I was a child and thought that I was actually doing something that, would, that was divinely guided. I was actually fulfilling a ritual and helping these people to play out their dark magic over my own people by partaking in that. The curse here speaks on eating your young and having a desire, a taste to eat the flesh of your young. Okay? So we can also assume that this is a literal thing. Because we know that much of the meats that these people put, like those meats that are ground up in a grocery store, everything ain't always what you think it is. And how do you decipher whether it is or not? How can you prove otherwise? Do you have a, a device that'll tell you if it's human flesh that you're eating or if it's actually animal flesh that you're eating? No, you don't. All you know is that you're trusting the label and because it's in a grocery store that it must be okay. But consider all of the animals that are slaughtered to, we got a McDonald's on every corner, a Wendy's on every corner, a Popeye's chicken on every corner, I mean a Burger King on every corner, a Wendy's on every corner. Where are we getting all these animals from? Or is it that they are having people eat their own flesh? These people will stop at nothing. And if you say it's far-fetched, then... Consider that you might still be asleep because you're talking about people who will cut off the genitals of your husband right in front of you. People who will burn a person alive right in front of your face. People who will take your child and feed them to alligators as alligator bait because they want to be able to lure the, the alligator in so that they can have a nice, you know, a nice pair of alligator shoes or an alligator purse. You're talking about people that are demonic and wicked as hell, and that will stop at nothing to make sure that you are as far away from your nature as possible. So this is why you got to start asking the questions. Pray and give thanks. Don't ask for it. Just give thanks for it in advance. Thank you for blessing me with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and for lifting the veil from, uh, from over my eyes so that I can see clearly all of those things that have been purposely withheld from me. These are the things that we have been facing here. And so I, I'm going to stop here. There will be more. As these messages come through, I'm going to share them with you all. And um, we're going to decode this thing together. Each one of us has our own position in the kingdom to help awaken one another. And so... If you have any uh, information, put it down in the description box and maybe that'll be something that I can look into as I continue as these messages come through. But that's what I have for you all. I love you. Um, let's stay in power, y'all, because we taken, we are, we have taken back our authority. We ain't going to say we are taking it back. We have taken it back. And we first begin in the spiritual realm by awakening to the powers that we possess, the authority that we possess in the spiritual realm by declaring and decreeing, writing those things down and burning them. And then you lighten your candles, you know, 
I am free. My ancestors are free. My offspring is free. The melanated man, woman, and child is free in spirit and in flesh, in sleep and awakened state across all timelines, realms, and dimensions known and unknown. Light them candles. Burn those declarations to put out, put it out there that you destroy that energy of what they have created against us for many generations. The curses, the dark magic, the spell work. We're more powerful than they are. And this is why they had to go through such extreme measures to put us to sleep. But we are awakened and they are in trouble. That's what I got for y'all. I'll talk to you all next time. Love you.